in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. His fate in the hands of the jury once deliberations begin. The city of Kenosha bracing for the verdict. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers authorizing 500 National Guard troops to be on standby, hoping to avoid violent scenes like this, which drew Rittenhouse to the small Midwestern town after the shooting of Jacob Blake. Our Terry Moran, who has been covering this trial since the start, is in Kenosha for us. This morning, Kyle Rittenhouse's case is nearing its end. His mother speaking out over the weekend about her son's decision to take the witness stand. It was rough and it was heartbreaking and emotionally draining for the whole, for him and for my family. I couldn't even be prouder of him. Closing arguments will begin at 9 a.m. Central Time here, and defense attorneys are expected to hammer home what Kyle Rittenhouse claimed in that dramatic testimony last week, that he acted in self-defense. <laughs> the governor of Wisconsin has put 500 National Guard troops on standby as this city braces for possible unrest. Kyle Rittenhouse faces three counts of homicide, among other charges, and he could be sentenced to life in prison if he's convicted of the most serious charge, first-degree intentional homicide. But prosecutors have occasionally seemed to struggle in court, with the judge angrily chastising them at times. Don't get brazen with me. And some of their own witnesses have given testimony more helpful to the defense. Still, the judge in this case has indicated he could include lesser charges during jury instructions. But on Fox, Kyle Rittenhouse's mother says she believes the jury will find her son not guilty. They've been taking notes, listening to the truth, and I hope they take that and take that into what um, the outcome is going to be. And Terry joining me now there from Kenosha. You know, Terry, you and I have been anchoring live coverage of this trial together. Now here we are, attorneys getting ready for closing arguments. There's a lot at stake here, yes? There sure is, Kara. There's a lot of stake for Kenosha. Remember, as you mentioned, uh, this case begins in those massive protests, civil unrest, fires lit downtown, buildings and businesses uh, attacked after the police shooting of Jacob Blake, a 29-year-old black man, uh, in last year. But now, uh, with these, with this verdict uh, coming probably this week, it, it looks like uh, the the city is on edge a little bit. That said, it is different. Uh, the, the jury will render uh, a verdict, and it is likely, as it often happens, that, that people will pay attention to that. And if it's a split verdict, it might draw some of the nervousness, some of the anxiety off it. The other thing is that it's cold here. Uh, there's an old saying uh, that, that Jack Frost is the police officer's friend. <laughs> and, and it could be that people will be in less of, of a mood to get out onto the streets when it's, when it's getting cold. Uh, that said, uh, as you mentioned, the governor of Wisconsin has called up uh, to prepare 500 National Guard troops to take to the streets if necessary. But right now, we're looking forward to closing arguments here. There is a lot at stake for Kenosha, but also for people across the country who've been following this trial. Right. And, you know, the trial, uh, Terry, as you well know, has been quite contentious at times. The judge really losing patience with attorneys, the jury having to leave and come back numerous times uh, into the courtroom. Do you see an impact here? Well, I, I do see an impact. I think the jury, you know, has been uh, in and out of the courtroom while the judge has been uh, back and forth with the lawyers. My hunch is that they are ready to take this case. They're, they're, they're going to listen to the judge's instructions on the law and closing arguments. It's my sense, having covered a lot of juries, uh, that they tend to take their job very seriously. You know, everybody rises when the jury comes into a courtroom. There's a reason for that. It's a signal to them that, that, that the case and this defendant's fate and the fate of the community will be in their hands. And so while a lot of people are talking about a quick verdict and this is a slam dunk for the defense, this is actually a pretty complicated case. Three separate shootings, a gun charge as well. Uh, each one different, each one uh, covered by videotape from various angles, each one uh, bolstered by witness testimony, and then the law it's of self-defense itself, which puts so much emphasis on a defendant's state of mind, sometimes the victim's state of mind as well. The jury's got a lot of work to do, and my, my hunch is they, they will take it pretty seriously, and we could be here for a while. 
You know, um, you mentioned the spirit of, of Jack Frost. You know, you and I both, between the state of Wisconsin and the state of Illinois, we were born in this neck of the woods. We both went to school in the neck of the woods. We have family there. Um, this is not something uh, you see in a town like Kenosha when we saw the unrest there after the Jacob Blake shooting. And, and that's what led to Rittenhouse's trial today. Talk to me about the people, our people, the city there, uh, you know, bracing for this verdict. This is not um, a normal thing that we see in an area like this. Well, Kara, that's a great point. Uh, the unrest here, the demonstrations and protests, uh, the, the drifting into riots, that, that was a trauma for this city, as was the police shooting of, of Jacob Blake, as we've seen in so many uh, places across the country, in Ferguson, Missouri, in, in Minneapolis, in so many places, uh, this flashpoint when, when it has just reached a breaking and boiling point for people, the, the interaction of police and, and the black community, the minority community. This was a traumatic experience for Kenosha, no question about it. And this case recapitulates that. It, it brings it all back uh, to the fore, and it will render a verdict, you know, not on what happened here, it's, it's Kyle Rittenhouse on trial, uh, but on whether or not what he did was justified. And that inevitably has political and cultural impacts for Kenosha and for the country at large. It's why so many people are watching. Uh, he came to this town, to this city, uh, from Illinois with an AR-15, tactical gear. Uh, he was ready to go to protect property. Uh, he says that's, that's, that's his testimony. And yet he stands, I think, in a lot of people's mind for a wider movement of people who are taking up arms with political intent, it seems. That's why this case has captured the attention of the country, because it comes out of the Black Lives Matter protests and that interaction between police and communities uh, that we saw last year, and because it looks ahead, really, to what is happening in this country's terribly divided politics. So there's a lot going on here, uh, and Kenosha's right at the heart of it. Our Terry Moran there in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Terry, thank you so much. I know that we're going to talk much more later as we cover those closing arguments as soon as they begin around 10 a.m. Eastern time. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.